Uh, so starting starting with the, uh, I'm just going to quickly revise uh, whatever we're doing. Uh, so we were at this point that uh, we had started talking about weak acids. I told you weak acids ionize and they produce uh, they produce H plus one ions. TK, this is something that we did. And uh, what else? Uh, we talked about that since it's an equilibrium reaction, uh, it's it, they don't fully ionize. So how do you find the H plus one concentration by by using the dissociation constant, which is which is Ka, which is uh, given over here? That if you as uh, so I use this, that uh, if you uh, if you can somebody's mics mics on, just a second. So TK. Okay. So uh, any weak acid is going to ionize in this way and uh, products over reactants, that's your that's your dissociation constant Ka, which is Kc. And we said that uh, the ions are going to be produced in equal ratio. So, so you can write this as H plus 1 squared divided by acid concentration because the ion that's produced next to H plus 1, both of them are going to have exactly the same concentration. And we talked about higher K value meaning that it's a strong acid, weaker K value meaning that it's a, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's a weak acid. And we also talked about PK that a lot of times K is not written; it's PK that's given. I said now we did do some questions, and I'm I'm just going to just to revise. Uh, uh, we're going to do another question, TK, just very quickly, and then we'll move on. Uh, so this other question is, let's say you have, uh, there's a question and they're saying that the pK value for a particular reaction, for a particular acid is given as uh, 3.5. And you have to calculate, uh, you have to calculate the pH of this acid. I mean, this is ethanoic acid, for example. So you're supposed to calculate the pH of this. You have to find the pH of this acid. Uh, and the concentration of ethanoic acid is also given. And that is 0 0.5 mole per decimeter cube. Okay, let me change this to 5.5. So this is given. Uh, what you have to do is you have to uh, use the same formula, which is H plus 1 squared, divided by the acid concentration. And you're, and you're simply going to plug in the values. Uh, one thing that you could do is, remember, P stands for what? P stands for the negative of log. Now. Uh, one thing is you can either do the conversion, uh, which we can. Uh, I mean, we're supposed to calculate uh, calculate H plus one concentration. We have the concentration of the acid 0.5, and we have the K value. We don't have the K value. We have the pK value. So what we basically have is the negative log of K, which is given as 5.5. So that means Ka is going to be take the anti log of minus 5.5, and that would give you 10 power minus. 5.5. So we have the K value with us, which is 10 power minus 5.5. That's equal to H plus 1 squared divided by the acid concentration, which is given as 0 0.5. Is this clear to everyone? Abdullah, is this clear, Ruba? Lubena? Yes. 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 Just, so, so just remember this formula and uh, tell me what the, what the value is. for this thing over here. I mean, what, what do we get for H plus one? H plus one concentration is going to be zero, 10 per minus 
sir, 1.5 multi 10 to the power of minus 6. Achha, did you take the end root as well? No, sir. Take the end root. Because this was h plus 1 squared. Yeah, 0 0.000. 008. Two zeros, three zeros after the decimal. Three, three, yeah. and then eight. That's it. I mean, nothing after eight. Eight, nine, you can say that. Like, if you want to round. Yeah. Tiga, just a second. Uh... You have to do 1.5 e minus 6. Yeah, I'm getting something else. I'm getting this is 1.5 10 power minus 6. I'm getting this thing. I'm getting point double zero one two two. Can somebody double check? Sir, it's 1.25 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 3. Answer. Take 1.25. So just a second. Huh, take that's 1.25 10 to the power minus 5. Let me just confirm. Minus 3, sir. Take it's the same value. It's pretty much the same value that I've written. So, and let me just confirm this 10 power, uh, 10 e minus 5.5. And into point five. Tk. Okay, anyways, I don't have a proper calculator, so uh, probably not happening for me. Uh, anyway, so uh, maybe this one is the correct value as anyways the point is the point is that uh, this is your uh, uh, value for k and using this you can, every asset has a dissociation constant it's going to be high if it's a strong asset it's going to be low if it's a weak asset and out of the three if any two are given you can figure out the third one the only thing is uh, sometimes uh, I mean pH would obviously they wouldn't be talking about a plus one concentration they would always be talking about pH uh, which is why at the end of the day, if you're trying to calculate H plus 1 concentration, you would have to take the negative log of that. And sometimes the value of PK would be, uh, K would be given in terms of PK, which is the negative log of K. So anyways, is this clear to everyone? Yes, sir. I said now, and also remember one one thing about uh, about uh, asset salts. We did do. I don't think we did asset salts. So I'm just going to write. I'm going to talk about asset salts. So what what are asset salts? Uh, remember they are also a weak asset as you know acid is anything that it's anything that produces h plus one ions that's that's what what an acid is uh whenever it produces H, anything that produces h plus one that's an acid uh hx releases some ion but also releases an h plus one ion so an acid salt is like if you have if you have phosphoric acid. Now that's an acid. How how does the acid turn into a salt? You neutralize it. And how do you neutralize an acid? You get rid of the H and instead replace it with some other ion. For example, you react it with a base or a metal or a carbonate. So uh, the H are gone. And they get replaced by, let's say, sodium ions. So they get replaced by sodium ions. Any plus one PO4 is minus three, so it's going to be any three PO4. Now this is a proper salt. So 
just hold on a second. Achha, so this one is a proper salt that the acid has been completely neutralized. Uh, so what has happened is that it had it had three H plus one ions. Now all the three H plus one ions are gone and they've been replaced by a sodium ion. Uh, they probably reacted with a base or a metal and they ended up forming in a 3 po 4 So this is a normal salt. Sometimes what would happen is that there's going to be partial neutralization. So the acid would partially be neutralized. So can you all hear me properly? <coughs> Hello, sorry, I got disconnected. Uh, is everyone there? And can yes. you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right, so just a second. I say, anyways, we were we were talking about acid salts, and I told you that. Uh, okay, fine. Now I, I was uh, talking about acid salts, weak acids. Uh, they were weak. They were weak acids. I was telling you about. Uh, uh, an acid getting completely neutralized. So it would end up forming a salt. The, all the H plus 1 ions are gone, replaced by sodium ions. But sometimes what would happen is that there's going to be partial uh, neutralization. Which basically means that out of the three H plus 1 ions that you have over here, uh, not all of them are going to get neutralized or replaced by sodium ions. So maybe out of the three, one sodium one gets replaced by sodium ions, and the rest of the H plus one are still intact, right? Or maybe uh, two of the H plus one get replaced by sodium, so it's, it becomes Na two, and only one H is left. So. These are known as acid salts and the reason they're known as acid salts is because they are still capable of producing H plus one ions. Is this clear? Yes. Okay, is this clear? Rubena, is this clear? Aruba, Shafak, is this clear? I said, so, so sir, it won't be a complete solve. It uh, it's, it's this one. This one is an acid salt because uh, it's still capable of releasing an H plus one ion. So why is it a, why is it an acid salt? Because for example, if I pick this one, it has H two PO four minus one ion. So it is capable of releasing an H plus one ion, and it would form H PO four and minus two ion like one more H plus one would be gone. So it can still act as an acid. It would dissociate and it will have a K value as well. And it's going to have a K expression as well. So the H2 PO4 minus one would be behaving as an, as a weak acid. Is this clear? Yes. Yes. And, and similarly, uh, this one as well, it, it's got this H PO4 uh, minus one ion. And it would be capable of releasing an H plus one ion. So it is following a general exp uh, general e equation that we did for acid dissociation, which is that every any acid could dissociate, produce some random ion, and would also release an H plus one ion. So it is following the same expression. So these so don't get confused when you see these salts. Uh, for example, if somebody somebody says that uh, if somebody's if there's a question and they tell you that they have uh, they have they have KHSO4 and its concentration is let's say point uh, one five mole per dm cube and simultaneously they give you the K value for HSO4 minus one nine and they tell you that the K value for that is one point five uh, times 10 per minus, let's say four. TK is just a made up value. Uh, always remember that it's not the entire thing that's acting as an acid, it's this part. It's only 
uh, only this part, which is which is our ages of four minus one i, and that would be the one that would be acting as the as the asset. So you can do the question the same way, and you can calculate the pH of this asset by using the same expression, which is that Ka is equal to the H plus one concentration squared uh, divided by the acid concentration. So we have the Ka value, which is one point five times ten power minus four. This thing has H as a four minus one ion, and it's behaving as the uh, acid in this case. So we're talking about this concentration, which is zero point one five, and we can find H plus one squared, and then uh, using H plus one concentration, you can figure out the pH as well. So remember, this thing is acting as the as the acid. It is dissociating to produce H plus one ions and SO four minus two ions, right? Is this clear to everyone? Yes, sir. I said, so, so always remember that anything could act as an acid, whether it's, uh, we did a lot of equations. So these acid sol salts don't get confused with them as well. Uh, just make sure that, uh, uh, remember this, that not the entire thing is acting as the acid. Uh, just as a, so, not the entire thing as a, acting as the acid. Just this part, which is the HSO four uh, minus one ion. I said now uh, moving further. Uh, there's another thing that we're going to do, and that's known as buffer solutions. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I said, let's talk about buffer solutions. Buffer solutions, what are they? And uh, uh, now buffers are something that's very important. We did discuss that, uh, that uh, H plus one concentration or, or NOH, I mean, both of them. This, their concentrations are very important in solutions. this is something that's extremely uh, important. And uh, we did discuss that uh, everything is happening in water. Water is important. All the reactions are happening in water. And depending on the environment, uh, if, if there's neutral water, uh, both, both ions would have the same concentration. If it's acidic, then H plus one would be greater. OH ions would be lesser. And if it's uh, basic, uh, then the conditions, in basic conditions, uh, in the solution, the OH ions would be in large amount and the H plus 1 would be lesser. So the balance of H plus 1 and OH ion, the, their ions in solution, that's very, very important. And that's, reactions are very sensitive to, to, the, to the changes in their concentrations. So for example, if your stomach reactions, they require an acidic medium, then everything should be acidic and the pH should not change. So for any system, the pH, it should not change. Because if the pH changes, then uh, reactions might stop, stop happening. Like if, the, if you make the soil too acidic, then plants would not be able to grow because the reactions that are involved in it, they might uh, they might not happen, uh, and vice versa. If you make something too basic, uh, for example, if you make your stomach very basic, then all the digestive reactions would stop happening. Some reactions they require more H plus one ions, uh, while others they require more OH ions. So uh, so uh, so pH should not change at at all cost. Uh, if, if 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 it's your blood, the pH should not change. If it's your if it's your inside of the cells, 
and there's a solution there uh, the pH should not vary a lot uh, is the point clear that the pH should not change is this clear yes no. Achha, so what yes. a buffer Achha, what a buffer solution does is that it resists a change in pH So, for example, uh, your blood, I mean, the pH of your blood should not change. Uh, I mean, uh, a lot of people, for example, if you inject a medicine uh, in your blood stream, the medicine might have a different pH, but your, your blood should have the capability of resisting a change in pH. I mean, you might inject yourself with some acid, like if you, have, if you get a bee sting, uh, if you get stung by a bee, the bee sting is acidic. So if it gets injected in your bloodstream, the blood uh, should be made up of something that is going to resist a change in pH. It would not allow the bee sting to, uh, to increase the acidity in your blood because all the reactions are dependent on that. So how, how is that possible? The way that's possible is that a buffer solution is made and that buffer solution is made up of two things. Now you don't want the pH to change. So you create a buffer solution and it's made up of a weak acid. Plus it's conjugate base as well. Or salt. So starting with the first thing, what's uh, we know what a weak acid is but what is a conjugate base? So when a weak acid ionizes, for example, you take ethanoic acid. Now, according to Brosnan-Lowry acid-base theory, an acid is something that produces an H plus 9. So this is your weak acid. And we obviously know that that's ethanoic acid and it is a weak acid. But whatever ion that's formed after its dissociation, that's the conjugate base. And the reason uh, this is called the conjugate base is, uh, and the reason this is, on the other hand, called the weak acid is that in the forward direction, it produce, produces an H plus 9. Whereas uh, ethanoate ions in the backward direction, they gain an H plus 9. So if the reaction goes backwards, H plus ions are gained. If the reaction goes forward, they produce or release an H plus 9. So this thing over here is acting as an acid. This thing over here is acting as the base in the reverse direction. Is this clear? An acid produces H plus 1, whereas a base in the reverse direction, it automatically gains the H plus 1 back again. So is the definition clear? Yeah. Yes, sir. Achha, so a buffer solution is made when you have a weak acid, plus you also have the conjugate base as well. Now this conjugate base usually comes from the salt of the weak acid. So it usually comes from the salt of the weak acid. Now, uh, what is the salt of the weak acid? So for example, I have ethanoic acid, so I'm making a buffer now. So let's say I have a beaker. I'm going to add two things to this. I'm going to add a weak acid. And I need to add uh, the conjugate base. The conjugate base is going to be CHTCO minus one, it's, it's going to be this one. This is going to be my conjugate base. Uh, but obviously a negative ion would not exist alone. As you remember, the negative ion, they never exist alone. So there has to be some positive ion, which is why you're going to add a salt of the, of the weak acid. So that's your, that would be the one that would be acting as the conjugate base. Don't worry about Na plus one because the Na plus one in solution would automatically uh, it's going to automatically ionize. Uh, it's not going to remain there. So this Na plus one 
would automatically if you mix it in water it, it automatically would dissociate so so having the na plus one doesn't really make a difference much it, or much of a difference because it's already it's automatically going to break off so this is how a buffer is made i mean that's the first thing uh how does it work i'm going to tell that later so whenever you have a weak acid so i'm going to, I'm going to take another example of a let's take another beaker i'm going to try and make another buffer so for example in this case i have uh hso4 minus one now we know that's capable of acting as a weak acid why because it's capable of releasing an ace plus nine and form so4 minus two so not only do i need the weak acid but i also need so4 minus two ions as well so how do you how do I get the SO4 minus two ions? I'm going to add a salt of SO4 minus two. So for example, any two SO4. Uh, that's going to be added into the solution. Uh, the NA would automatically break off, so we, we're not really concerned with NA, but it's going to be a source of SO4 minus two ions. So I need two things. I need the weak acid plus I need SO4 minus two ions separately as well. As a weak as we can make another another uh, buffer by let's say this time uh, I have these two things like NH4 plus one is acting as a weak acid uh, produces NH3 plus H plus one so in this case I need the weak acid so NH4 plus one ions are not going to exist alone so let me add let's say I'm, I'm going to add NH4Cl uh, the CL doesn't really matter because uh, in it's a soluble substance, so it's going to dissociate anyway. So the CL would be gone or mix it mixes separately with water. So we're not really concerned. So NH4 plus one would be there in the solution. Plus I would need NH3 as well. So I'm going to add ammonia to the solution as well. Together they're going to form a buffer. So let's just be clear. Forget how it works at the moment. Is this idea clear? Okay, what two ingredients are required to make a buffer? Lubena, is this there? Shafak, Aruba, Emmet? Yes, sir. So, so remember this thing that, uh, we, remember we haven't discussed uh, how it's going to work. We know that it's going to resist a change in pH. Uh, so whenever you see an acid, a weak acid, any weak acid, we wrote multiple equations earlier. So whenever you see a weak acid, any weak acid, that's present in the solution. Plus, uh, the conjugate base is also present. Uh, then it's going to be, uh, as enough example, a solution of uh, this solution might, I mean, remember negative ions, they don't really exist alone. So this might be a salt uh, like Na, H2PO4. And this would be in the form of a salt. I mean, this one over here would also be in the form of a salt like uh, it's going to be Na2HPO4. You mixed, you mix these two things, these two things, it will form a buffer because this thing would produce HPO4 minus two ion, this thing would produce H2PO4 minus one ion, and together they're going to mix to form a buffer. So any, any weak acid mixed with its conjugate base would form a buffer solution. Now, how does the, how does the buffer solution work? So let's go back, where were, where were our diagrams? Remember, it's going to it's going to uh, act or resist a change in pH. So how would this resist pH? Now, that's the question. This mixture would resist it's going to resist pH change. But how would how would it do that? Uh, the way it's going to do that is that if you add an acid, Like if you add H plus one to the solution, so I've started adding H plus one, right? right? So the pH would automatically start uh, decreasing. Remember the pH should not change. So I've, I mean, I'm adding H plus one from outside. So lots of H plus one are getting added from outside. So if H plus one are added, uh, they should be neutralized. So 
So what's going to happen to them? What's going to happen? They will get neutralized by the conjugated base. Yes, the, the ethanoate ion would start attracting the H plus one ions, right? CH3CO minus one. It would start attracting the H plus one to form ethanoic acid back again. So it would it would eventually start absorbing. So it would eventually start absorbing all the H plus one ions to form ethanoic acid back again. So all the H plus one ions are going to get eventually get neutralized. Uh, similarly, the opposite is this clear? Okay, is that all clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Anyway, so all the H plus one ions have been neutralized now. Okay, I added the H plus one ions. And my conjugate base, it started attracting all the H plus one ions to form ethanoic acid back again. So all the H plus one ions are gone. As a vice versa, if I add an alkali and if I try to make it basic, now when I add OH ions, so now all of a sudden you have got lots and lots of OH ions and the pH starts to increase. Remember the solution should resist a change in pH. Now what would happen is that you've got an, you've got an acid so if OH ions are added, they should also be neutralized. Now in this scenario, uh, the ethanoate ion over here, that's not going to play any role because it's a negative ion, so they're gonna repel each other. But this ethanoic acid molecule, CH3COH, would start, I mean, you you have an OH ion, it would release an H plus one ion because it is an acid, and I said it is, just hold on one second, let me get in a call. Abdullah Aruba, can you hear me? Yes, sir. I said, sir, but the last thing was that uh, this is what we were talking about. Uh, that if you if you add OH ions, the acid would jump in and it would it would start neutralizing the OH ions, and all the OH ions, the acid would start releasing H plus one. Those were those would be given to the OH ions and they would get neutralized and they would end up forming water molecules. So no matter if you add H plus one or you add OH ions, in both cases, uh, the the H plus one and the OH ions are going to get neutralized. So is this clear okay, how it's acting as a buffer? Think is this clear to everyone? Yeah. Yes. Think Shafa Glubena, is this clear? Yes, sir. So I'm repeating the point that buffer solutions would exist uh, if the solution not only has ethanoic acid, but has a significant quantity of the conjugate base as well. And remember, a significant quantity. So that means this has to be added from outside. Although ethanoic acid would also dissociate or can dissociate to produce these ions, but ethanoic acid dissociation would only produce very few amounts of ethanoic ions. Uh, so these needs, they, they need to be added from outside and they're gonna be added in the form of a salt, like uh, sodium ethanoate. And this also needs to be mixed. Uh, so it's not, 
I mean, this ion is not coming from this thing. It's, I mean, this would dissociate to form this ion, but the amount of ions uh, in the solution from this would be very limited, which is why they need to be added from outside. So it's going to be a mixture of the, this ion and this ion. They both need to be present in large quantities in the solution. Only then can a buffer solution act or uh, exist. And that's, we figured out the mechanism in which, uh, in which I showed you how how if you add an H plus one, the conjugate base accepts it. If you add an OH ion, the acid releases an H plus one and neutralizes this. So we're going to continue with buffer solutions. Uh, we'll continue tomorrow then, TK. Sir, there's also the conjugate acids, right? Like uh, there's a thing called conjugate acids as well. Yes, well, that's about, that's with bases, but we're not. We won't be studying bases. Yeah. Like if okay. you have a if you have a weak base and a conjugate acid, then that would also act as a buffer. But that buffer is not in our course. Oh, okay. 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 Take care. Love it. Love it.